Hello everyone, welcome to part 5 of this series. In this episode we are going to set up some basic terrain. Our default scene is just really plain without some terrain in it. This will definitely not be the final result and just like a lot it's a work in progress. Before we start I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon as it gets updated. So when it comes to nature assets and terrain assets it's a difficult subject. There's honestly so many assets out there that it's unlikely that I'll be using exactly the same ones as you are. And I'll be using these and I'll explain why as well. So first up I will be using map magic to generate the actual terrain itself and to place grass on it. So this will be to generate terrain, textures, etc. Now the great thing with Map Magic 2 is that the core is free, it's a modular approach just like Game Creator, so you can try it out, see if you like it. It's definitely worth the try, I honestly think it's an amazing tool. Now because this is a modular approach there are some modules like objects, biomes and splines as well. And these, I only use objects for the moment, which allows me to generate trees and rocks and branches and all of that with the tool as well. But, you know, that's optional. Would recommend giving a go at the free core. It's really, really good. I also use the vegetation engine in order to create seasons, motion with vegetation as well. So actual dynamic interaction and a lot more I'll show you in a bit and I use nature renderer now the reason I use nature renderer is a twofold reason one my own project is HDRP and nature renderer will enable grass again in the terrain tool which is pretty great and two is performance nature renderer is the number one when it comes to performance that you know it beats all other assets in that regard so if you care about performance I would definitely recommend this as well obviously links will be in the description so this is a really simple example of a scene and we'll be creating a new one so this is just for reference but one of the nice things here is that we can you know change seasons and it's not just some colors you will actually see less grass so the grass will grow when it you know changes seasons stuff like that it's pretty cool we can also change motion so we'll have you know more wind and storm and all of that stuff so yeah pretty cool we'll go over how to use all of this and the most important one will be map magic in order to actually create the terrain and texture everything so let's get started so here we have our scene so what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to hide the player and going to hide the props as well and the items so not remove them just hide them going to keep well I'm not going to keep the plane I'm just going to remove that straight away so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a map magic graph so this is the default map magic folder and I just created my own folder so you know right click create folder and inside of here we have graphs so I'm going to create a new one It's going to be an empty graph. Give it a better name than this, of course. And here we go. So this is the graph. Now I'm going to keep it here in the bottom. Just going to drag this up a bit so we can actually see the results. And I'm going to drag in the graph. So literally grab the graph and drag it into the scene. And there we have our object. Now the nice thing with map magic is that you can generate pretty much infinite terrains. So, well I'm pretty sure it's not pretty much infinite, it's infinite. And the way it does it is it 
you know it renders those others only as you go near it so it's pretty good for performance now I'm not going to do anything like that just yet I'm going to move it a bit though just to make sure it's somewhere near our player and our player will be in the middle so where's our guy there we go so yeah pretty decent sized terrain there we go now let's hide our player again so yeah this will be it so pretty empty now you can do a lot so I'm just going to generate some initial things so we have noise simple forms well a lot you can also import a height map if you want to do that if you already have something great I'm just going to start fresh so let's add noise let's add I'm not going to try to pronounce this I'm going to add a blend here there we go and this blend will allow these two to be combined so I'm going to drag oh, let's add a layer I'm going to drag these in and let's just create a output now height is one of the most important outputs and as you can see right now we have a interesting look it's really a lot of mountains now the way this works let me actually remove and disconnect this one so this would be just be with noise and as you can see it's a you know pretty decent looking pretty decent looking I don't know what else to say and you can you know change all of this around and honestly the names don't tell me that much I just play around with it and just see what happens intensity what you know and the important thing the limit here is always the height so the height will play the limit here so you see it becoming flat that's because we reached 250 so yeah pretty important to keep in mind we have size there's you know there's so much you can do I'm just going to keep it pretty simple for this one so I'm going to drag this one in and yeah you can even you know play with overlays for example um, if you've ever used Photoshop you'll recognize this type of system ads there's you know soft lights yeah now this one obviously straight away you can see works pretty well for low poly type of terrains so you know definitely a good option I'm just going to combine them I don't want the terrain to be entirely low poly that's not really the look we're going for and going to set the height to 20 going to change cellular to organic so it's you know looking a bit nicer I'm um, going to focus on my player here drag him up a bit there we go and as you can see this is not really an all that exciting you know terrain it's it's pretty simple really but it's you know it's supposed to be grass flatland so it's not supposed to be super exciting Well, let's actually go with the cellular look. Just fits a bit better, and yeah, as you can see, it's not really a all that special terrain, but you know, it's it's just you know a flatlands grass type of environment where it's not really all that hilly. But obviously, we'll go over in more detail and make sure the map will fit a lot better later on. So now that we have these 
going to add a portal and basically the way this portal works is so that you can group things together which is actually pretty useful so I'm going to have an enter here there we go let's drag this in I don't know why I called it enter it's height there we go then let's add another portal which is exit and that way we can group these things together so hold shift with the left mouse button and we can group group selected uh, let's call this one just terrain there we go bit of a weird color but yeah fine So we select our heights. So basically this comes in. And the reason I'm using this is because this will connect us to the next step, which is going to be our textures. And as you can see, there's a lot of compatibility with different things. So you can combine it with CTS, with Microsplat, RTP, etc. At some point I will cover Microsplat as well but the last update doesn't seem to be working correctly for me so I'm just going to wait for a update so basically Microsplat got updated and MapMagic just hasn't had the updated update yet to be compatible again so for now I'm just going to use textures and the nice thing is is that once it works all you need to do is just literally swap the node and everything will work together so pretty cool now this works pretty much the same as normal terrain so you just add your layers here so we're going to start off with well let's actually see what we have so I'm going to use um, everything that was in the fantasy environment for this so I think that were these ones so we have the dirt, forest, some flowers or whatever, it's supposed to be grass, this grass looks nicer, it's a bit big, we have a rocky environment as well, which is going to be pretty cool later on, in a normal map, yeah that looks nice, sand, yeah, there's a lot in here for different terrains, so yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. Cool. Anyway, we're going to get started with just a... Well, it's either this one or this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. For the next layer, I'm going to add grass. I think the one with the normal were, was better. And I'm going to add some basic ground as well, which is this one with the normal dirt. Yeah, there we go. Now, even though we have different layers set up, as you can see, we can only see the one. So what we need to do is we need to create some filters that will automatically paint these terrains for us based on certain settings. Now we're going to use the height as a reference here and we're going to add some, well, we're going to add some connections here. So just going to already drag these in and yeah, as you can see, this, you know, just creates a dirty mess, which is not what we want. I'm going to drag this one here. I'm going to select cavity. And as you can see, this already has an effect straight away, which is pretty nice. It's not the effect we want, but it's an effect. I'm going to use cavity again. There we go. Now I'm going to use both here, but I'm going to turn them around basically. And yeah, these will generate our 
our different layers. So pretty sure I turn this around. Convex, yeah, there we go. So right now on the lowest parts we have ground, then we have this texture that is a mixture of ground, this layer mixture of ground and grass, and then on the heights we have grass. So it's nothing special, it's a really basic terrain and you know can get a lot more creative, but for now this will suffice. And as you can see we're we have some you know basic environments maybe let's make it a bit more interesting change the height to 30 strike the player yeah it looks a bit nicer maybe nah I still think it's a bit too much it's supposed to be kind of flat there we go cool so sorry for that I love changing around so the next thing and obviously you can add a lot more layers and you can have height you know based on a certain height you will only get a rocky texture and we're going to do all of that once we go into our you know fine tuning of terrain i just thought it was good to set up something basic and once we go into fine tuning we'll add a lot more detail to this now the next step is going to be actual vegetation so let's group these as well let's call this textures and let's make that I don't know bluish there we go and the next thing is going to be actually connecting this to something else which is the actual vegetation so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create a portal. And we will have a portal here, which will be grass. There we go. And we're going to have another portal which will be, I don't know, details, not really sure what to name it, but yeah, there we go. And I'm not going to add any type of vegetation on the ground, but obviously you can do that with things like rocks. So, you know, maybe actually a good idea to add something else, but, you know, get creative. So we have these two portals here. So I'm going to, again, create an exit. and select grass and create another exit which will be details there we go so here we will have an output which is going to be grass And this is where I'll be using, before I continue, my second asset that I just showed, which is Nature Renderer. And the asset literally is all about rendering, so quite important. So go to your main terrain, so main terrain, add Nature Renderer, and yeah, that's it. I'm turning off procedural in instancing because I'm using the default render pipeline in this one and it will give you a warning no prefab or grass texture selected that's correct because we are doing that in map magic so here we have our grass and I'm going to set this to mesh I think it was this one not really sure and yeah, here you can, you know, get creative and just pick whatever you want. So I'll use this one for now and then we're going to take a next step and use the vegetation engine to actually make it a lot nicer. And as you can see, this is pretty plain. So it's pretty boring. There's not a lot of vegetation here. But the nice thing is, as you can see, it actually, you know, you can filter this yet again so you can mask everything here so there's a tiny bit of overlap and you can mask that away if you want 
and as you can see this is pretty boring so I'm going to make a couple of changes here so I'm going to make this minimum 2 I'm going to change the density to 10 which is a lot nicer already and we're going to play with the height a bit as well so I'm going to have one here I think and let's make this 2.5 Let's actually up this a bit just to make it a bit better. Make sure you press enter every time you change a number. So there we go. So it's a lot fuller already and yeah the grass only covers the grass textures so as you can see the ground is not covered which is pretty nice. These areas are somewhat covered covered a bit with grass but sometimes there's a bit of overlap and I'll show you how to mask that as well if you want to and yeah you can play around with these settings as you can see density obviously changes the number we'll see here so if I do five here you'll still have a lot actually two will have less and this is grouping so there's a minimum of as you can see now it's only one together and with a density of two that's pretty sparse but maximum four and it as you can you know guess it will actually randomize this a bit with a minimum of three it's a lot fuller and I'm pretty sure density 10 is the maximum because even if I do a hundred well no it still changes a bit it's 20 didn't do that much anyway but yeah um, the wider this is however the um, the more it will overlap as well with other things so keep that in mind so it might overlap a bit more if you increase this number so important to keep in mind now height literally does what it says so not all grass will have the same height so one some of them will be one some of them will be 2.5 high and that's pretty cool so not everything is exactly the same height bit of randomization and that's I kind of like that now going to add another one so output grass and we're going to add some flowers here as well and I've honestly no idea where to find what those are named again so I'm using for this one this grass is from nature renderer by the way just to be absolutely clear but you can use whatever grass you want this is nature renderers grass but obviously in the fantasy bundle there's so many assets just make sure they are prefabs so vegetation and let's see what looks nice we have some flowers some bushes as well should I add some bushes that's nice I'm going to add this one blue poppy so blue oh, let's make sure we set it to an actual vertex yeah blue poppy and by default because you know as you can see it's you know there's not that many you will see this actually looks pretty cool so we have some variation this is nice I'm going to reduce the height a bit so maximum one don't want them to stick out too much like in my previous scene so yeah as you can see this height actually has a huge effect so if I do max two you have a lot of them actually sticking out so max one it's a lot lower but you know seems a bit more appropriate and it adds some color to the scene having some variation and you can continue this just add others and you know get creative now details is actually going to be on this texture so I'm going to do again grass there we go and I'm going to add this one here already set it to this and what are we going to add there some ferns maybe that's a bit much Ivy's ground cover maybe that's nice 
Let's try that. IV ground cover. And yeah, we have some. Maybe this is not really appropriate, but no. Not really a fan of this one. I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't really fit the scene. So let's try that again and let's find something else. Pretty sure Lotus is for him water. Ground cover. Leaves. We're just going to do leaves. We're just going to keep it simple because we are adding some trees as well. So ground cover leaves. There we go. I think this is the same one I already used actually. I'm fine with this number. Maybe it's a bit much. You know, there's not going to be that many trees. But yeah, you know, it's a small little detail. And as you can see, you know, there's some overlapping at times. But it covers a different texture. So you won't find any in the middle here. Now, if you want to mask any of this, you'll do the same again. So you just drag this over and basically select how you're going to mask this. So this can be done on so many things, but levels is one of them. And yeah, let me actually remove that. I'm going to do the mask on the normal grass. It's not enough flowers to really notice a difference going to do levels here and you know you can change this around I'm not really sure which way to go to make it all work correctly actually I still masked this wrong one there we go explains why I didn't see any changes So this is the default, dragging this down will have that effect. Which in a way is actually pretty nice. So, you know, it leaks a bit less. As you can see, there's a bit less leakage. And yeah, well, you, we can do that, I'm, I'm fine. Anyway, you can play around, there's so many masks you can add and just get creative. So we have our grass now, we have some leaves on the ground. Let's add the last thing, which are trees. Now the trees are actually from the objects module. So that's important to keep in mind. That means that the, this part is not free. So if after trying this out or watching this, you not really interested, keep that in mind. I think it's a pretty good tool. There's so much more you can do with it, but that would take so long just to get something basic set up. So scatter is one of the initializers for the objects. And the important thing, this is not just trees, you can add rocks, etc. as well. So we'll add some rocks just to make it more interesting. And let's add a mask here as well. Modifiers, and we'll have a mask. There we go. Drag this in and I'm going to use our portal again for grass. Could actually just drag this lower. That's fine. There we go. So our grass is connected to it, and the reason for that is because I only want trees on these green areas as well. Let's add our trees, output trees, there we go. And I'm not really entirely sure what they were called again, so let me just try to find them. Broke leaf. There we go. Now there's so many, so many assets in that bundle, and you know you can get creative and use different ones. Yeah, I'm fine with this one. 
and there we go now you will see that there's hardly any trees so obviously we will need to change that number just a tiny bit so and by a tiny bit I'll mean a lot so let's do I don't know, 500 it's a lot more trees they're not everywhere but it's a lot more of them already in our scene and yeah it's pretty cool if you want to add more just you know add more we can do 800 see what that looks like we'll have a couple more uh, 2000 maybe that's a bit much no that's actually all right looks fine cool so we have some trees let's do this again and actually add some rocks as well so this time we're doing objects as an output and I didn't do that in the example so let's try to find something interesting so we have fancy environment prefabs rocks well that was easy cliffs is a bit exaggerated and yeah we have rock clusters and we can add that to the ground actually so we're going to use a different mask here they don't fit the color so you know matching assets are quite useful but yeah we'll use these I'm fine with those so rock cluster I'm going to use this one and we need to do a new mask because it's not going to use the same one So let's add our mask here and that's the wrong mask. There we go. Let's connect these. Let's do another scatter. maybe random I'm not really sure there's it's not too complicated but there are a lot of options so I'm going to create a new portal let's call this enter and so this is going to be ground ground there we go connect that and I don't know let's do 500 not really sure how big these are and if we're going to see a lot of them well there's one so yeah that's a lot of them apparently quite big looks quite nice try to see where they're all at because don't really see that many well that's the thing it's called scatter for a reason so they're just random but yeah let's just keep it for now I mean there's some rocks there there's another one cool so that's a nice thing it will add some random objects and you can do so much with this and change properties and you know get creative and do whatever you like really yeah there's a lot of options but I think for now this is completely fine we have some some random things and the nice thing here is that you don't have to paint all of this yourself you don't have to mask anything yourself it's qu honestly quite like this in my personal project I've used it to have a make an island in the ocean as well and I know this gives you the impression that it all has to be the same but it definitely definitely doesn't have to be so I had an island in the middle which was rocky and the rest was really low in comparison and that was the ocean floor so yeah you can get creative there's a lot you can do with this so let's group all of these together 
right click group group selected and let's make this one green that way we will know it's vegetation so there we have it now I'm actually just going to add one more because why not pretty sure we can just duplicate this one and let's do grass So we have a white flower, let's add a dandelion as well, why not? Just to make it a bit more interesting, so there we go. Now these are really clustered together, so we can play a bit with this so let's do density of one zero point two for this just to have a bit less and uh, from time to time we'll have it then the line in there as well so yeah a bit, a bit of a small effect but at least it's something right so the last step we need to do right now is we're going to actually change all of these assets we're using and I say all of it but it's really not that many and we're going to convert them with the vegetation engine now the reason for this will simply be in order to have all of the seasons all of our assets basically controlled in one have our shaders match a bit better as well it's just going to be a bit nicer to do this so first thing I am going to do is going to show you the layers so please make sure you have these three layers set up now I'm sure you can use different names as well but you know why risk it just add these so these will be for the vegetation engine the next step will be to go to right click and add our setup and this has all of the basics in here so motion going to set it to calm straight away we have our season so by default we'll have summer overlay is used most often for winter so add a snow effect on vegetation you can lose it, use it for a lot more so you can even use it for having localized blood on actual vegetation which is pretty cool but for now we're just going to use it for winter we have wetness so if you have you know enviro or something that makes it rain you can match it to automatically make it wet as well and size fade is in order to make sure that vegetation rendered in the back is a bit lower and this is for performance as well as for looks because it just looks better for some reason now these layers as you can see these volumes are have certain sizes and let's actually turn on gizmos to see how big it is and it's actually pretty small so let's add a zero to that a zero to that that way they will cover the entire area and yeah that is needed so there we go now you will need one more thing and I'm going to take the easy route here and I'm actually going to go to demo and I'm going to copy this over. Reason for that is because it just saves so much time in setup. So this group elements, I'm just going to press copy here. And I'm actually going to copy one more thing over as well, so that's this one. So yeah, copy these over. You don't have to, you can set them all up from new. So when you go to components and you can set them all up from new, this is a lot faster. So it saves a bit of time. And I know some of you are not a fan of copy pasting, but when it saves a lot of time and you know unimportant steps, I don't really see why you would bother doing it the difficult way but that's my personal opinion 
So we're just going to paste those in. Now this one, I'm already going to drag it in the player and the movement folder. We still need to adjust it, so we'll just drag it in there so it's in a good place. And these ones need to be in a different size as well. So I'm going to remove these for now. And we're going to resize these. So I'm going to put them on zero. And let's do a thousand as well. A thousand as well. That way they match the volume, they match everything. Now what these layers do, what these elements actually do is these elements are what allows you to change the colors, etc. Now the reason these are separate elements is because you can do localized coloring as well, which is what I mentioned for example in having blood effects on actual vegetation or having, if you have a winter environment, you can actually have the snow melts or not have snow around a campfire stuff like that so that's why these elements are well loose objects is so you can get creative if you check out the demo scene for vegetation engine you will actually see this as well it's being used pretty creative I'm going to add one more layer though so i'm just going to duplicate colors here I'm going to rename this size And in here, we're going to change this to size. And let's give this a different one. So in the winter, it will be 0 0.6. Spring, it will be 0 0.8. And autumn will be 0 0.8 as well. And basically, once we alter seasons, our grass will, vegetation will actually grow along, which I think is pretty cool. Um, really emphasizes that whole you know whole effect of spring and summer and etc you can get more creative with it than than i'm doing right now but i think this is already pretty cool so right now none of this does anything so if i change this you will, won't see a difference and the reason for that is we need to convert these prefabs now the nice thing here is that the vegetation engine works with hdrp works with urp and all of that so if certain assets you have are not compatible with any of the pipelines this will actually make it compatible and don't quote me on that but for me it has worked i'm pretty sure it's not even one of the selling points but i had some assets that didn't work with the defaults they were only actually created for urp and i converted the prefabs and they all worked with default as well so maybe i got lucky but it's actually pretty nice so let's get started. So we're going to find the grass one and I'm going to do something here which is part of my process, you don't have to do it. So I'm going to duplicate everything I alter and you don't need to do that. It will automatically create a backup just in case but it's just something that makes me feel better about it and well, that's why I'm doing it. So I'm adding the originals as well in the scene. And you know, if you think like, wow, this is a bit of work, it definitely is. I mean, terrain is, you know, really cool, really interesting, but it's not something that, you know, takes 10 minutes. If you want to do it right, just it will take a bit more effort we had the red poppy as well now we had the blue one yeah we had the blue one so let's just drag that in and to duplicate this one as well and the reason I add VP, VE in front is you know reminds me of vegetation engine and it will be a bit easier to find uh, the moment you have a lot of nature assets so in my own project, I have too many. I just got way too many of them. Hardly see the difference between a lot of them. So this allows me to, you know, easily find the ones I actually converted. And we had the dandelion as well. 
There we go. And let's duplicate that one. Rename it. There we go. And all that's missing is our tree actually. So let's drag that in as well. So in this project, they don't even have that many and it's already takes some time sometimes to find all of them. So there we go. So the original one and the one I'm going to convert. And as you can see, I, these were the ones I used in my scene as well. It's just because these match well together. So, And basically you can play around with the shaders so much because there are so many settings that, that you can mix and match pretty much any different asset to work together. But it takes a lot more work obviously as they are you know, different looking by default. So that's why it's sometimes just easier to use similar assets. So if you use Sinti, for example, you're in luck. Those are really easy to convert and don't take a lot of effort. Now, what we're going to do is I'm already going to use all of our new ones. So I'm going to select all of those by default. And no, there won't be any different. just yet because we didn't convert anything but I want to see the effects straight away there we go and our dandelion and the last one is going to be our tree as well now I'm not going to change the rocks, maybe I should, because I'm pretty sure the overlay would work as well, so it might actually not be the worst idea, but just going to keep it with vegetation for now. So here we have them in front of us, and I'm doing that because it's just easier for me to you know convert all of them. So we're going to start off with our grass, which is this one. I'm going to go to vegetation engine and prefab converter now here you will have the option of presets and there's a lot of them so as you can see Sinti and nature manufacturer are here um, really popular both of them for assets um, we have speed tree m tree all of that is in here as well so there's some really popular ones procedural I'm pretty sure is what is used for Gaia yeah that's procedural so I'm going to use that preset not really needed but it just works I'm going to recalculate the normals and the reason for that is because stylized assets otherwise often have a really strange outcome so convert and as you can see this looks really weird and that's because the main albedo is missing so that's because I'm not using a preset that actually matches so this is why I have these ones so I can actually easily find the original albedo and we're just going to drag that in and there we go now all of the grass is working and if I just to show you the effect, if I actually change the season here, it will shrink, the colors will change, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's keep it like this for now. And there will be some settings we'll need to alter, but for now that's it. So I'm just going to get rid of those. We're done with those. So let's do our leaves next. So 
let's pick the right one, the VE ones as well. Just going to use the same here, bridge, yeah, grass again. And did I already hit convert? Yes, I did. And these seem to just work straight away, so that's pretty cool. Are they actually changing seasons as well? Yeah, and they're becoming white, which is something that grass doesn't do, so I'll need to check that, but in winter they'll be white, which is pretty cool. So let's remove those as well. And then we have our poppy. So let's do grass. Not sure this is grass, but oh well, it works. Cool. I always just double check just to make sure they're working, and yeah, become small and snowy as well, which is really cool. And then the last one is the dandelion. Now the top of that is already white, so that won't change much. And let's just use grass as well. Do convert. And that looks a bit odd like this so I'll have to check that one but yeah we'll do that in a bit anyway I'm pretty sure it all yeah that all works and I'm pretty sure it's because it's white by default so we'll have to change some of that so we can remove that as well and then the last step is our tree now with the tree there will be one extra little step as well. So prefab converter tree. Let's try it without this one for once. So from preset, let's see if that works. go and this one is not going to shrink luckily um, let's see seasons let's see if this colors along yeah and it already has that snowy effect and you can alter that of course so it seems like I know what I did wrong and add snow to the branches as well which is pretty nice so we'll have to change this light color here but yeah all of this works the only one i'm going to alter is our grass because i'm not entirely happy with the way it came out so let's open the prefab converter revert it back to normal and do grass again i'm not going to alter this one so i'm just going to keep it normal That's why normally I would have kept that albedo, but that's fine. Let's just drag it in once. There we go. And let's drag in that albedo. There we go. And let's see if this gives us a better result. When we change seasons, yeah, there we go. It's nice, there is still some tweaking to be done and obviously there's so much, but let's at least tw tweak our tree here. So 
So our tree needs a bit of an adjustment. So we need to add motion. So let's give this some motion. So tree procedural. And as you can see, this looks really weird and that's the flutter. So I'm going to turn off flutter. Not a big fan of that. And interaction is low. Now the reason this is low is because it shouldn't change that much if you you know touch the tree so maybe it shouldn't change at all and as you can see when it storms the tree moves and the branches move a lot more which is pretty nice so that's a little preview so that's cool we can keep this open and let's actually Let's actually drag it in and alter that color just a tiny bit. So it's two different ones. Oh, this is the bark. As you can see, the bark should be slightly different, maybe. So we're going to. No, oh, that's the wrong one. So you have two different ones and you can literally alter everything. So for example, these are the leaves and this is the bark. Now, I don't want the bark to change colors with the seasons. That's not something I want. And as you can see, I do want the leaves to change. So that's one thing that's going to well, not change. I do want the leaves to actually change size, so I'm going to add that to our leaves. So I think that's interesting, but obviously this shouldn't shrink, so we're going to keep that the same. And in the bark we're also going to make the default color a bit, tiny bit darker, browner, not too much. Maybe that's a bit too much. There we go. It's a bit browner. It's a bit more contrast. I I like that. So cool. We're done with that. Let's just double check and make sure it all works well. No, that doesn't look that doesn't look nice. Maybe we should completely fade. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, so let's just for now actually not do that until I figure out how to do that properly. So Let's see what it looks like with 0 0.2. Maybe that actually does look nice. I'm not really sure. That actually looks nice. So at least it shrinks a tiny bit. That's enough. We'll just keep it like that. So we can remove this one and I just want to was there something else I wanted to check? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Oh yeah, our dandelion. Now our dandelion colors as well, and that's not something I actually want. It's a bit odd for the dandelion to change uh, alter as well. So that's the only one I'm going to adjust, and then we're we're pretty much done with that. So let's alter this one. So our last step, there we go. So yeah, it's not going to have global colors. You can do that, I don't want to do it. I do want it to resize though, so when we go to seasons, it will shrink, but yeah, this should remain white. It shouldn't be coloring, so we're just going to keep it like that. So that's it for the dandelion fix that as well so yeah it's pretty cool all of this is pretty well set up now what we didn't do is actually add motion so let's just add a quick preset here so motion um, grass so they move a bit it's a bit too much so I'm just going to do three and amplitude of interaction is 1.5 And we're going to pick our dandelion as well. 
It's also going to have motion of grass 3 and 1.5. And you can preview straight away what it will look like with a lot of wind, which is a bit much, but you know, you can alter these to whatever you like. I'm not going to do motion with the leaves, just I think it will look weird. Yeah, it just looks odd. So, yeah, we're not going to add motion to the leaves on the ground. And our last step would be actually our grass. So let's actually look that up as well. There we go. And we're going to add the same motion grass. I'm going to alter this to 3 as well and 1.5. There we go. So we have motion now for everything. So if we check our scene right now, let's turn off gizmos. We check our scene, we can alter motion which is pretty cool so it storms we can change our seasons and there's definitely some fine fine tuning to be done there but i think this is already pretty cool it's actually growing with the seasons i like that our overlay that's not something i'm going to do right now but let's just see so 0 0.8 for example it's the winter overlay it's a bit less strong so as you can see this alters it yeah some more settings there but we'll have a look but yeah pretty happy with this outcome really this is pretty nice and we just need to make sure it actually is interactive and that's what we added to our player as well that's the element of interaction interaction let's keep it here not really sure if it will work properly but let's give this a go Now, it is important to note that the more complex your vegetation actually is, the more realistically it will move. So as you can see, this doesn't look as nice when interacting as it did with, um, you know, if you've seen that video of me. So it does interact, but, you know, I need to play around with those settings a bit. But it's not as good right now as it was with my other video. And that's because this is incredibly simple grass. It, it couldn't be simpler than this. So if you're using a bit more complex grass or, or Sinti assets or something like that, you know, it will look nicer. But yeah, do you you know play around a bit? It does move, but it needs some fine tuning and some tweaking to make it look a tiny bit better. But at least we have our basics. So yeah, pretty cool. We have our scene. Maybe change those LODs a tiny bit, but at least we have something a bit prettier than just the really basic flat plane we had before. Let's just put our props and our items back. So this terrain is a bit higher as you can see, so we'll need to move these a bit. There we go. And yeah, this this will need some tweaking as well, but they look pretty decent right now. So yeah, there we have it. We have some basic environment set up. And I would definitely advise playing around with this using some different assets as well. For example, there's so much you can do. It is actually really cool. You can obviously make your terrain a lot more complex. As you can see, I hardly did anything really with the terrain just use two things mix them together and the end so not a lot was done here quite a bit done was done on vegetation though so that's pretty nice but if you have better assets for grass I would obviously recommend using those I think our you know our flowers are pretty nice they're pretty cool 
and the terrain textures are actually pretty decent as well so we have some good things in that fantasy bundle now this was quite a long video so hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit like and subscribe and i will see you next time